Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on statistical physics. Today we're going to look at how we can use the partition function which we have derived previously to solve some physical problems. So we saw that in the discrete case, one could write the probability of measuring some microstate i as e to the minus beta times the energy of that microstate over the partition function, where the partition function is simply the sum over all of these exponential terms. It essentially acts as a normalization constant, but it is a very important and useful one. Indeed, it contains all the important information about a system. Most thermodynamic, I think all thermodynamic variables can be de derived by, from, the thermodynamic, from the partition function. One thing to emphasize is that we are summing over microstates over microstates and not over energies. Uh, this is important because sometimes you might have a degenerate energy level and if you sum over energies rather than microstates using this formula, then you will actually give equal weight to states that are degenerate as uh, non-degenerate. They're going to have the same weight, which obviously cannot be the case. If a state is degenerate, it should have technically a higher probability. Um, obviously, it depends on the difference in the energies, etc. But in general, if you want you want to sum over microstates rather than energies. If you really want to sum over energies, then you could, but you would have to multiply everything by the degeneracy of that energy level. So you would have to do something like this, where this is the degeneracy. Degeneracy. Okay, just a little important thought. Now let's look at how we can extend this argument to the continuous case. So we're no longer working in discrete energies. We're now working in a phase space, which is continuous. What happens now? Well, it's not hard to see that we can generalize the a partition function as an integral in phase space. And this integral is going to be the same exponential, but instead of just using the energy levels, I'm going to be using the Hamiltonian defined over this phase space, and I'm going to integrate over the phase space. We're going to have 3n degrees of freedom for position and 3n degrees of freedom for momentum. Okay. Now, what now? How can we use this partition function? Well, firstly, we can use it to calculate, to write something called the uh, probability density in the canonical ensemble. So essentially, if we in technically, the physical interpretation is if I integrate this, um, or better, if I multiply this by some small, uh, phase space volume, such as this, it will give me the probability that when I observe the system, it lies within this phase space interval in d3n q times d3n p phase space volume, which can be centered on, centered at centered at Q and P, okay? Um, so what does this mean? Well, using our canonical function, using our can canonical partition function, we can simply write this as probability density at Q and P is equal to exponential of minus beta Hamiltonian at Q and P divided by the partition function. And it's easy to verify that this is normalized. Okay, good. So we have found the canonical probability dis distribution 
With this, we can evaluate another very important quantity, which is entropy. Because we know that entropy, or the entropy of some given distribution is just minus the Boltzmann constant times the average in that ensemble of the log of the probability of that ensemble. Written as an integral, this is the integral of rho c log of rho c d omega, where d omega is just equal to this thing right here. I'll use it for shorthand. Okay, so it's the phase space infinitesimal volume. Now, what is, let's take the log of this. It's very easy to do. Everything is essential and exponential. So this is equal to minus KB integral over rho C of minus beta times the Hamiltonian minus the log of the partition function. Good. Now let's look at the first term right here, this one. The beta is a constant, so we can just ignore it pretty much. What we're really doing is we're integrating the Hamiltonian over the phase space using a weight given by the phase, given by the dis probability distribution. So this is really just evaluating the ensemble average of the Hamiltonian. And the minus sign becomes a plus sign, obviously, due to this. Uh, this times beta. Similarly here, log of z, the partition function is constant in phase space. It's just a constant. So we can drag it out of the integral and we're left with an integral of the distribution function, which integrates to one. So this is going to be equal to plus log of z. Okay, now we know that the internal energy is equal to the average Hamiltonian, to the average of the Hamiltonian. So this is equal to, actually I can write it differently, I can write it as 1 over t times u, right, plus kb log of z. Okay, that's good. So we have found our first important relation giving us the entropy. Next, uh, what we can do is let's consider another quantity. Namely, I'm going to consider the log of z, which we have right here log of z, and I take its derivative with respect to beta. Okay, so this is essentially just equal to 1 over z times the derivative of z with respect to beta. Right, so this is equal to 1 over z times um, the integral. I'm going to drag the derivative inside the integral of e to the minus beta h integrated over phase space. This is a very simple integral. It's going to become 1 over z times the integral of minus h times um, e to the minus beta h. Now, interestingly, this is just the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, right? This is just 1 over z times exponential of minus beta over h. So this, these two quantities multiplied together give you the distribution function. And if you multiply h by the distribution function and you integrate, you're left with the ensemble average of the Hamiltonian, which we just said was the internal energy. So that is our second 
step, we have found that the internal energy can be written as, sorry, minus, let's not forget this minus sign. So the, the internal energy can be written as minus the derivative with respect to beta of log of z. This can also be rewritten through some very simple calculus as the following. Okay, so we found internal energy. Um, now this is really useful because we can now insert this expression, right? Expression number two, we can insert it into expression number one. And what we get is the, that the entropy is equal to what? It's equal to one over T, so KBT times the derivative of log of Z with respect to temperature plus KB log of Z. And it's not hard to see that this is just equal to um, the derivative, uh, sorry, KB times the derivative with respect to temperature of temperature times the log of Z. All right, but what now? Well, recall from your typical thermodynamics class that we define the free energy F to be such that the entropy is equal to minus the derivative of the free energy with respect to temperature at constant volume. But this is exactly what we have calculated here, right? Here we're taking the derivative of some quantity with respect to temperature, and we're doing so, of, of course, at fixed volume. So writing this in the following way, kb t log of z, we can immediately identify the free energy as minus kbt log of z. Now we could have done so from the get-go actually by noticing that actually if we define the free energy like this, uh, if we define the free energy as u minus ts, which is also a perfectly valid definition, then we can see from here that F must be equal to minus KB log of Z. They're really equivalent approaches to the same thing. Okay, so we have found an expression for the free energy and this actually solves a lot of our problems. This is really the most important important expression because all other thermodynamic quantities can be expressed as some form of the free energy. You can simply do the following. You can simply calculate U as the free energy plus Ts. So you can simply evaluate the free energy, which is given right here. And what about the entropy? That's right. I mean, uh, how would you evaluate that? Well, to evaluate the entropy, you can use another thermodynamic relation, which is the following. S is equal to minus the derivative of the free energy with respect to temperature. Of course, a constant volume. And there you go. So you can find the entropy from the free energy and then find your internal energy. Uh, what else? Well, pressure can also be expressed as the following, so pressure P is equal to minus the derivative with respect to uh, volume of the free energy at constant temperature. And you can find lots of other relations. Uh, and yeah, so once you found the partition function, 
you can calculate the free energy with this relation. And once you found that, then you can calculate entropy, internal energy, pressure, and all other things.